Hello guys, this is another episode of Networking in the Cloud and uh, we'll just be doing a basic troubleshooting of NLP, uh, Network Load Balancer, many of you know that. So you know, you there's a lot of things with NLP and uh, uh, I just want to show you a little bit of some security tips, some, some troubleshooting tips rather that you should be looking out for. You don't want to get caught up in the little things that, uh, you know, that really matters. So as not to spend a lot of hours troubleshooting your, your loot balancer. So I'm just going to get to uh, get into it real quick. Uh, if you look at my screen now, I have uh, the network loot balancer that I've already created, as you can see. And uh, from there, you can see that if you look at the listener here, the NLP is going to be listening for a request from the client on this port. And when it gets that, it forwards this to, to the back end on port 80. So that is fine. Your listener port can be any port. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, and where you just want to be careful is that when you now go to the security group of your back end instance, the TCP, the, the TCP port that you'll be allowing is that of the target, not the listener. So many people make this mistake you because they they realize that okay the clients are eating my my nlb or they're trying to get to the backend they're trying to get to the resources uh and the port that the, that the nlb is listening on is port 8 800 so they just allow that and that is going to be a very big mistake so the port that is uh, important in our security group should be the target port not the listener port so you get that right okay so this is my listener but you can see that here now let i will navigate to the target group and i will show you that so you can see i have this list of uh, target group the one i'm using right now is network lb so this is my target group this is the network lb which are the balance target group that, has, that i've configured as you can see now this is my protocol this is my L check uh, settings, not protocol. And if you look at this basic configuration, you see it's a target type. I decide to use instance, and it said it said the protocol port is what TCP eighty. So this is the port that is very important that we allowed in the security group. And now just take us to the security group real quick now. So this is my security group. Uh, if you look at my, my security group now, you can see this is the one that I'm using, the networking cloud ARP security group. So this is security group I'm using. If you look at my inbound rules, you see that I have port 80, I have port 22. This is just for me to be able to log in into my instance if I need to uh, access them. And this is port 443 in case I change my listener to TLS instead of uh, just TCP. So if you look at this, you can see that the port that I have opened for the inbound rule is port 80, not 8800. So many people might be wondering why is the source all zeros that am I not exposing the target uh, backend to the world? Well, that is not the case. As a matter of fact, this target group, this backend instance can be in a private zone. It doesn't matter, it can be in a public zone. What matters is that the even if it's in a public instance, the public IP of that uh, instance is not outside. It's not. It's not. It's not. Uh, I'm not giving anybody that. What I'm giving to the client is the uh, is a URL, is a DNS name of the load balancer, and that's what matters. And when they eat that, they you see that by the time they hit that URL, which I will show you a little bit now, they will not be gets into the IP address of the backend, it's going to be some public IP address of the load balancer. So because the source IP addresses are preserved, because we are using an instance as a target group, in a target group and a target type rather, the, the, the target type is instance. So the source for NLP, the source of the clients are going to be preserved. So if that is the case, because we don't know what the source is, so because it's going to be preserved and it's going to be sent over to the backend instance because we don't know what the source is, that is why this has to be like this. 
But if it's something that you know what the source is, you know what your source is, you know where you're coming from, maybe you're just going to give that uh, DNS name for the load balancer to just two clients. So you know what their source is, then you can go ahead here and edit the uh, inbound rules and add, add, add code that to, to the inbound rule of the security group of the backend instance, then that's fine. But because you don't know what the source is, you leave it as this. Because if you don't do that, then it will be difficult for the client to connect. Now, another thing is, is, is uh, and the same thing also applies if, yeah, I think, yeah, that's it. I, I just want to say something else. It's, it's like saying the same thing that I've said again, so it's fine. So this is exactly, you see the port I'm, I'm, I'm allowing here is port 18, not port 8, 8 on there. And that's the first part of what I, will, uh, what I want to tell you about. So let's just do a test and let's see what is going on. So this is my instance. So let's just do a call to this. You can see because the port is not the default port 80, I have to append this to that uh, DNS name. So if I do this now, exactly, this is exactly what I just want to show us. You can see I'm trying to go to this URL. It's failing, it's, 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 it's trying. It's, it's trying to get to one of the nodes of the, of the uh, of the load balancer, it's it's failing. So I'm going to explain something in this line to you also, because I think for every load balancer that you created, you're going to have two IP address. I believe that's how AWS will give it to you because we're going to find out now. I'm going to do a, do a dig on the DNS name and we'll see uh, how many IP address that we get. So let's just try again and see. So it's still going to that same, so I'm just trying to see until we get to the, you can see. Now, when I tried it again, we are trying these and not the other one. And this was successful, as we can see. So if I do a dig short for the, sorry, I think I just need the, the URL. I just need that URL, not the old, old call. So if you do this, you see, I, I was returned these two IPs, but for some reason, when I try to do, go to this, this is not working. When I try to come to this, this is working. So where one thing you should first of all check is this. Now I, uh, there, uh, I had uh, two, uh, let, let's just quickly check now. I will just check my target group. As you can see, this is the target group that I'm using. If I go to, target, I only have one instance here. And you can see this instance is in uh, availability zone 1B. Uh, before doing this video, I had my instance in availability zone 1A. So one of the things that might be a problem is cross zone, uh, uh, enable cross zone feature. Because if you don't have a cross zone feature and maybe you, you have this and you then add another, you register another instance that is in availability zone A. So if you're trying to, if that's, if, if traffic is trying to send, traffic will only be sending to one, one, one availability zone. So if you want to send traffic to the second availability zone, it's not going to work because the cross zone is, is disabled. So that's the first thing that you need to ensure if you have multiple uh, targets, targets, or backend instances in different availability zone, then you need to ensure that you enable cross zone. And how do you enable cross zone? That you need to do in the load balancer attributes. So we go to the load, load balancer tab. So in the load balancer, the load balancer tab, we come to, to the description. And in, in the description, we just uh, scroll down. You look at this one, you see attributes. So in the attributes, you can see deletion protection, cross zone load balancing. This is this was uh, disabled before. So you, I think you'll find it disabled by default. So you can edit this and then enable. So that's how you enable it. And if you are for many people looking at how do I enable access log, then this is access log also for you and you can check the documentation for more information on access log. Access log just shows you uh, 
the, the logs, what is wrong with your connection. And as a matter of fact, I think for NLP, you only get access log if you enable TLS for on your listener, because it says network load balancer. So that's way, this is the way, this is a way that you get your calls and working. Another thing, because you can see, I, so you might be saying, oh, but there's calls and enabled. And uh, so why, and it doesn't matter if I have one availability zone, uh, uh, one instance, one packet instance in an availability zone, why is that particular uh, node not working? Why is it not working? Because that's not is probably uh, launched in uh, that. Uh, so you might say, some of you might say, but you have a, you have a cause a cause on load balancing enabled. So why is that endpoint not working? That why is that load balance endpoint not working? Uh, because that load balance endpoint might actually be installed in in uh, an availability zone A, but it should work. It doesn't matter. Yes, I, I agree with you. It should work. And uh, this is the reason, and this is one thing you have to also be mindful of. If you look at my load balancer, you can see this is the availability zone, right? I have availability zone one E and I have availability zone one A. So for, so I might not know where the other endpoint is actually uh, in, uh, launched, but for me to check that on my, let's just see if I can check the network interfaces to check which load balancer is responding, which one is not responding, if we're going to see something. So this is this is the this is the network interfaces that I have. So how do we find these out? So if you look at these for better understanding, I would just uh, encourage you to the description is your perfect bet. So you just expand these to see what is going on. So if you look at this, you know, you might be tempted to look at, oh, this is, this is, this might be the reason, but these are just the, these are just the web servers that I launched. So this is, uh, this is one web server and I launched in, in a public subnet. I launched another one in the, in the private server. So this, are, this, this is not what we are looking for. What we are looking for is that we want to see the endpoints, the interface, ENI that are created by the load balancer. So if you look carefully, you see ELB net. This is one, this is another ELB net. So if you look closely, you see this one, what is going on? Ah, this is the public IP and this is the private IP. So if you look at our, the dig that we did, can you see this? This is the 54.194.37.153. What do you have here? 54.194.37. So it tells you that this is the one that is responding, right? And the next one, which is uh, the one here, this is the 34, and this is that. This is the one that is not responding. So what is going on? Let's look deep into that. This is one that is not responding. It's in US1B, okay? I have you in US1B and it's launched in this subnet. So let's go to that subnet. What exactly is going on? So now that we're in the subnet, if you look closely, this is the subnet we are talking about. This is a subnet that the second, the 34, uh, the 34 something, <laughs> the, 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 the 34, this one, this IP, this public IP is launched into as we saw in the previous uh, window there. So if you look at the subnet, so what is going on? I check this, I see, ah, this was actually created in a private subnet. So and because we do know that the NAT gateway does not accept incoming uh, connection. That is why whenever we try to launch, make a request to that public IP, it's not responding. It's only when we try to make a request to the second public IP because that is actually launched in a, in a public subnet. So we can check that out and see this should be the other one because I only have, I only put it in one A and one B. And this is one A and I wasn't using this subnet. I was using the default VPC. So if you check this and see, you see this is going towards the IGW and that is why that is working. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope this actually makes a lot of sense to you. The very first one in summary of it, the very first one that we talked about is that your security group, your target group is diff can be different from your listener group. But, but then when you are uh, given permission in your security group, also in your in your network ACL, 
ensure that what you are allowing is the target group port, not the listener port. The listener port, as you can see, my security group does not have any port permission for listener port. The it it on is only on the on the target port. So that is all that you need to allow. And because my 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 target group type is instance ID, the source IP addresses of the client are preserved from the internet. So anybody can eat the the DNS name of the load balancer. It doesn't matter, but I don't know who that might be because maybe I have a successful uh web well web website so i don't know who that is so because i don't know the source has to be everyone and that does not matter because they cannot come directly to my uh to my backend instance directly so the only uh, thing that they have is the dns name and so and that's another story if, if you are using ip address as a target group because then that does not that that does not preserve the IP addresses of the clients. So the IP address that you'll be seeing is the private IP address of the network load balancer that will be eating your 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 backend instances directly. So anyway, that's that about that. And the second one where that we talked about is that if you, as you can see, that I was eating one uh, endpoint of the load balancer was successful, the other was timing out, and uh, if you look at that, just ensure because you've created an internet facing load balancer, you just want to ensure that your uh, one of the endpoints are not created in its private subnet. If that is the case, you will see that you will not be able to reach it and uh, ensure that they are both in the, in the public subnet and that should solve it. I hope you enjoy it. That's the summary of it all. And if you want me, if you uh, uh, confused about a particular service in, in the in the networking aspect of AWS, just hit me on the comment button. Let me know what uh, video you like to see, and it will come right up. I hope you enjoyed this, and I thank you for listening and viewing. Cheers.